Welcome to the Morning Sanity Check, where we talk about the different pillars of resilience, spiritual, physical, social, and mental. Join us so we can talk about it, then be about it. Let the show begin. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another Sanity Check. My name is Seth. And I'm Camille. Hey, and ladies and gentlemen, we're here speaking on all things resilience. All right. Yeah. And we just want to welcome you. Make sure that you are all settled. Hey, how you doing? How are you, ma'am? Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So, hey, we encourage you all. Make sure that you go to StreamYard.com. If you haven't done so already, make sure you do so that your comments can be posted so we can have a great, great time. OK, and this is going to be a real good show. Good morning. And also give us a little hashtag. Let us know where you where you're at. OK, let us know how, how you're doing and where you're at. Good morning. All right, Miss Miss uh, Slay Queen. <laughs> right. She's always slaying. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is, in fact, going to be a great show. But before we go up into it, I want to make sure, like I said, if you guys are watching on Facebook, that's cool. Make sure you do and you uh, follow us and share this. Please share it. It only take two seconds to share just to let your friends and family know that you're getting some goodness this morning. And also, if you're on YouTube, make sure you go to set the speaker. You will see the actual show right now who do you love and how do they know all right how do they know and also tomorrow we're going to have another show but this is for the lions then okay that's good i'm sorry not yes tomorrow tomorrow at 6 p.m we will be talking about avoiding digital anxiety okay digital anxiety understand that not only what we're going through but what our kids may be going through and we, our guest is going to be miss D- doctor excuse me dr grenadich all right a retired uh air force so let's get into it how are you doing ma'am i'm doing really really well today it's a beautiful day outside a little chilly yes um, but it's a good day so mm-hmm. how are you today you know what i'm, I'm okay i'm okay i'm um Oh boy, I'm up. Oh, and so I'm doing this um this fasting called the uh snake juice. All right, snake juice diet. It is crazy. And then within the last few days, well, let me see, almost a week, I'm down ten pounds. Okay, ten pounds, and it's crazy. Now it's intense, but it lets you know. Okay, that oh, when you think you're hungry, you're really not hungry. You're just a food junkie. You see, and you 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 just used to putting something in your mouth. But if you stay focused and just stay active doing the things that you have to do, you ain't got to worry about it. So but that's where I'm at. And it, it's, it's a journey. So now uh, so I did four days fasting and then I broke my fast for a meal. And then now I'm doing another 72 hours. And so my next meal is going to be in a couple of days. Actually, no, take that back. It's going to be Sunday, Sunday evening. So it's crazy. Good morning. Hey, so what you think? You think you can do that? No, that's, that's <laughs> a hard no for me. <laughs> I found that I'm just not a dieter. Mm-hmm. I can't, there are certain, I love food. Like I love food. Mm-hmm. So um, it's hard for me. My, my diet is called pushback. Yes. Okay. So I push back from the table a little bit when, you know, I'm getting a little chunky. I push back a little early. I right. Too, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I make my, my portion smaller. Yes. So that's, I that's what I do. <laughs> I understand. And you know what? I just want to I want to kickstart my metabolism, you know, get it back to where where it used to be, because for some reason it, it's on slow motion. So this is going to help regenerate, you know, and revitalize what my body's supposed to do. And it's a That's good called- detoxing. That's called after 40 metabolism. Oh, no, no, no. That's a, you know, the crazy part is I'm feeling better than I was, you know, in my 30s. You see, and and then, you know, it's it, truly it's it is the detox and getting all that crap out and then just start thinking more about things that you put into your body you know absolutely absolutely i walk all the time so you know i have to try to keep my metabolism up as well yes um and so food choices is a huge thing yes um, we get lazier i think as we get older but i do have more energy now than i have you know in a long time so um you're right yeah it's, it's what you do really mm-hmm. but 
it is true that after 40, you have to work a little bit harder. Absolutely. You really do. naturally wants to slow down. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And, and, and so it's up to us to decide how we want to let our body tell us what it wants to do versus us telling our body. Now, there's some natural things that's going to happen, but we don't have to succumb to it. And even being in this uh, quarantine and, you know, this low, uh, you know, this low connectivity with individuals, we still uh-huh. have the power to do things and just have, we just have to be innovative of how we're doing it. But absolutely. so ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome to the Sanity Check. So we're talking about who do you love and how do they know? Right. Because yeah. you got individuals that say, well, no, I love them and they should know. Really? Think about how silly that sounds. <laughs> should they know? Right. But anyway, go ahead and open it up, Miss Camille. So we're talking about love. So I want to talk about first, you know, what really what is love? A lot of people are confused about that. So it's hard for them to really kind of express uh, love to another person. Um, Because they're not really sure what love is. And it's really kind of a mix of emotions. There's no one, like, one size fits all when it comes to love. Because we all know about the love languages. We express love differently. Um, It doesn't look the same for all of us. But in the end, it's still our way of showing someone that we care. So some of the things are, you know, it's a strong feeling of emotion, Uh, You want to protect that person, whoever it is that you you love. There's this sense of connectedness that you have to them. Um, I mean, there's like this this sense of respect and warmth and things like that that you express to another person to show that you love them. So I just want to get that out of the way, that it does look differently for a lot of people. We can also express it, you know, to um, animals and things like that. But we're talking about, you know, human love right now. So one of the things I want to talk about, uh, the reasons why we don't um, uh, show love is fear of rejection. And this is one that really, really goes a little bit deep. All right. Nobody wants to feel rejected. Nobody wants to feel like they can't. um, uh, Somebody doesn't feel the same way as they do. So oftentimes we hold back. Sometimes it's really, really deep seated, you know, that as a child, you love somebody or your first crush, you know, you, you told them, you know, I like you. And they were like, ew, ew. And then they spread rumors about you to everybody else. And that carries through to us. Um, that carries through to us, um, as you know, people really kind of, um, oops, I'm sorry, you guys, um, as we start to learn how to love you know, and what that looks like for us. If we were rejected, say our, our family, our parents weren't very affectionate and we were affectionate children and we went to go and hug on them and love on them. And they were like, Mm-mm, no, we don't do that. You know, uh, we don't hug, we don't kiss. And you're like, oh my goodness. And then it makes you feel like, um, you know, you're in a very vulnerable state. Like I feel this towards someone and they don't feel it towards me. And then there's that that rejection. And then that's that constant fear of rejection. Am I doing enough? You know what I mean? For this person. Um, so fear of rejection is a huge, huge, huge part of why people don't want to express love to another. And then sometimes there's things like it reminds you of a past relationship or a past failed, um, you know, time that you were you were um, in a relationship it just, I'm sorry, you guys, this thing, thank you. Um, but it reminds you of all of those past hurts and stuff like that. And nobody likes to feel hurt. So we avoid saying, I love you, uh, for fear of what happened in the past. So sometimes our past does, even though we want to say, no, I give everybody a second, you know, their own chance or whatever, the past will creep up in your relationships, especially when you're trying to express love to someone. Um, And more often when it's the first time, you know what I mean? Like, when do I say I love you or is it okay? Or am I going to set myself up for failure or for rejection? So we try to um, avoid that at all costs. So, I mean, uh, Seth, I'm just going to ask you, I mean, I know you're, you know, things are different now, um, but at any point in your, your life, did you feel like I can't say I love you to someone that you felt love towards um, for fear of rejection? You know, no, I wouldn't say that was it. I think the issue was for me 
was understanding what love meant to me and how I received it first. Like, for example, not necessarily received it. I needed to find out what it meant for me to love someone, if mm-hmm. that made sense. And so I've never really shied away from how I felt, but it, I got to the point where after understanding what love meant to me, regardless if it's in a relationship, friendship, or whatever the case, is, case it was, I was bold enough to say it. However, not everyone is ready to hear it if that makes sense. So I I got to the point where I was able to really use that discernment and just know that I love an an individual and just picking up on them and saying, okay, I think it's time to let them know verbally that I love them. And I think that was the thing. So never really was afraid, you know, in, in saying it now, don't get me wrong when I'm young and you know, we, we're you dating and everything or think we're dating. You know, you say it first. Now you say it first. You say it first. All right. I love you. No. Okay. So that's different, right? That's, 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 that's puppy, puppy type, but really that true love. Mm-hmm. It, it's yeah. I really didn't get to that. Didn't get to that point. And I'm glad too, because that's a, uh, a different thing. It is, but Mm -hmm. that's like one of the people's uh, biggest fears is rejection. Mm -hmm. Um, And it keeps them from saying, uh, I love you, even though they may feel that way. And I'll just say for me, you know, there was a point in time and I say, you know, it's you don't know kind of when and all this stuff. And um, I would say something like, you know, I'm having loving feelings towards you. You know, not that I love (laughs) you. So a roundabout way. In a roundabout way, because it doesn't, you know, I think that people, when they respond to that or they hear it, they're like, um, oh, my gosh, like, you know, I don't know what to do with that. So it's like, I, I don't re- expect a response. You know, I'm just telling you how I'm feeling right now. And I'm having loving feelings toward you doesn't mean that I'm in love with you. This is just how I feel in the moment, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was really <laughs> that was really, um, you know, my way of not or trying to circumvent a feeling of rejection. And you know? yeah, I, I yeah. get that. And, and, and what I would do too is make sure that I uh, respectfully take that from someone if I was not feeling that way. So mm-hmm. if they say, Hey, I love you. I say, okay, word. Mm-hmm. Really? Like, are you sure you get, or, or what makes you feel that way? So I mm-hmm. indirectly, I don't avoid that. But Mm -hmm. I just I dive in deeper to avoid it, if that makes sense, because to your point, yeah, people can get hurt and say, hey, you know, they or you love me, but I don't love you. You don't love me back. No, that's not it. But, you know, the way I love is different. And, you know, just a few gestures doesn't mean that uh, you're lovable material to me. You see, right. so and it so that's the deal, and 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 I think that that we do put a lot on that on that rejection piece, you know. We do, and we have to understand that you know, just because you say that you love someone, doesn't mean that they're there yet. But it doesn't mean that they're rejecting you when they don't say. Because we hear a lot of times, like when you just said, um, you know, I say, oh, okay, well, yeah, you know, thank you. And somebody's like, I mean, you don't love me back. I mean, you know, and then automatically they go into Mm self-preservation, which really becomes an attack on somebody. Yes. And also, I want to bring this up real quick, is that people don't understand that um, some people react very harshly to um, expressions of love towards them. Mm Mm-hmm. And they don't understand why that happens. Like when somebody says, I love you, they're like, and they just get angry Mm -hmm. and they feel this rage and they feel this, you know, something come up in them. And it really is because love for them puts them in a vulnerable state. Absolutely. And it usually has to do with, like I said, past hurts, past experiences, past um, feelings of rejection. Uh, Maybe they just don't know how to express it. So it comes off as angry. And a person is like, I'm trying to show you love. And here you are just like lashing out at me. There you go. Yeah. And people don't, they don't, uh, you know, peel back the onion to figure out why am I reacting so harshly to someone's expression of love towards me. Right. And And so, yes. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, you know, pull back that onion, they'll continue to reject love. Therefore, never 
being able to accept love, mm -hmm. and then it's harder for them to give love as well. Yeah, that's so. true. That's absolutely right. And you know what? That that kind of brings me to the next point. And how do we express that? So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, ways to show that you love someone and to create that space so that they will feel okay about it right to Camille's point so how about you tell the individual that you love maybe n that you love them but you appreciate them and then tell them the things that you appreciate so that kind of softens the blow if you will because coming to a person just saying hey I love you and it's like why you know because you you don't you, you, a person don't know how to take that if they're not used to it to to your point so let's practice that Let, let's think about that the ways that you can express love and here's a that's that one right just show them that you appreciate them and let them know right so a little love right goes a long way so many of us are guilty of taking people for granted okay yes. we take people for granted so it's good to acknowledge those that who's who've impact you, your lives and that letting them know, hey, I could not have done A, B, C and D without you. you. You get what I mean? So you may not have to just come full fledged and say, hey, I love you and wait for a response. No, just say, hey, you know what? If I wasn't doing this or if you weren't here. I wouldn't have, have been able to do this, see this, learn this, or know this, or feel this way. I appreciate you. So that's yeah. another way of saying that you love someone. What you think? I, I think that's that's a great point. You know, you have to um, give people. Everybody loves in their own time. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we have to just continue to try to show our love um, in different ways. And and you have to kind of sometimes roll the dice. A few times. Yes. And try different ways to show them, you know, that you love them in a way that fulfills you, you know, for one, and in a way that they can accept without feeling the pressure of just saying, I love you, mm -hmm. you know, if we're talking about romantic love, you know, and so, like you said, I appreciate you, or here's this gesture, I wouldn't be here without you. That really is saying a lot, like that we talked about love, that connectedness, that respect for that person. You know, you hold them in a certain esteem. And so people, I think, even without the words, if you, your actions are in a way that they can understand, or maybe it's that message and the feeling behind the message, mm -hmm. then they can understand that. And then, you know, sometimes you know when people love you, like, you don't even have to tell me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know because of mm -hmm. what you do, what you say, you know, you call me beautiful, you hug me, or you you fulfill the needs that I know. And oftentimes we know when someone loves us uh, without them having to actually verbalize it, even though it's, it's good to hear, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to know for sure, depending on where you are in your relationship. Absolutely. But yes, so all of those expressions, like you said, you know, um, are perfect ways to, to express your love. Mm -hmm. and, and it's and, really, really important to do so. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You know, to do so. A absolutely. And it, yeah. And I just want, want to say this too, with, with all of that, you know, we're talking about this love, but we put a lot of pressure on a person to feel the same way that we do when we feel this, you know, that certain way. And if we can understand that our love in, is an expression of how we feel, you know, and doesn't necessarily, I'm not saying somebody should be abusing you or nothing like that, but doesn't have to re be reciprocated in the same way. Just because I feel like I love you doesn't mean that you have to love me. I just need to tell you that this is how I feel about you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and stop expecting the same in return because we are setting ourselves up. <laughs> for mm -hmm. failure, you know, for that that hurt, that pain, that fear of rejection. And, you're absolutely right. And, and, and set ourselves up in our head. Right. And and, and mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. And yeah, that's that's what I wanted to kind of talk into and to let everyone know, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is not necessarily about you. This right. isn't about you, right? This is about the other person. So again, it's about who do you love? Think about the individuals that you love, either in relationship, friendship, whatever the case it is. How do they know? 
Again, we can't just say, hey, well, if I didn't do A, B, C, and D, I wouldn't love you. Come on now, because you don't know how they receive love. So you also have to give yourself that type of that give them grace to uh, just express to you what love means to them. And before we go into the next one, Camille, I want to let everybody know good morning, good morning, and then make sure that you go to StreamYard dot com forward slash Facebook if you are on Facebook just so you can get your comments in. All right. So that's what we're talking about. Who do you love and how do they know? What you got next, Camille? So the the next thing I have really is like uh people don't express love and I'm I go through the don't so we can get to the why you know how we could and how we should. But uh people really um they don't want to feel like or look thirsty. You know what I mean? They don't want to say it too soon. Uh, we have this kind of weird thing in society. And I hear, you know, even as a, a grown adult, conversations are like, well, how long do you have to be with somebody before you tell them you love them? Well, how long do you know what I mean? Oh, you told her you loved her in two weeks? Oh, well, there's people who have known each other for two weeks and got married because they just knew. And they've been married for 40 some odd, 50 years, you know? So it's no time limit. And I think that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves from outside sources, you know, what they feel about how we should love. Um, and so we often don't do those things, don't express love because we think it's too soon or somebody's going to say I'm thirsty or, oh, you just fall in love so easily, you, you know, you just in love with the thought of being in love, you know, all of those outside pressures. Um, and then again, you know, if I tell this person, are they going to be like, oh, and run away? You know, because it's only been a couple of weeks, but this is how I really, really feel about this person, you know. And so we have a lot of outside pressures that we allow to get in the way of us expressing our love towards, you know, someone we feel that way towards um, for fear of what other people are going to think about us, you know. So um, people really do that, you know, and they they ask and they're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know. I, I can't tell you how to feel. And I can't give you a time length of how that's supposed to feel. I know that the people that I loved or were in romantic relationships with, there was no set time frame. It wasn't like, okay, after I was with them for three years, then, you know, all of a sudden I fell in love every single time. No. You know, there are some that I might have been having loving feelings towards, you know, in about three months or four months. And then there's others that took much longer. You know, and then the type of love you might have, even though you're in a romantic relationship, you respect this person, you love them, you want to make sure that they have the best, but you may not necessarily be like in love, like an in or committed, like I want to marry you type of love, mm -hmm. but you really do love that person and you want the best for them. So there's no time frame, you know, on how or how long you should um, uh, wait to love somebody. Your chemistry, your body, your heart, everything is your emotions are going to tell you that. And so we need to stop giving people so much power over us and how we and when we want to express love to another person. Mm. Um, because really, the benefits for us, and we'll talk about that later, are much greater. When you don't express your love, it's repressed. Yeah. And it turns into anger again. And so we want to avoid those types of things. Just go ahead and tell somebody you love them. It's okay if they don't say it back. You know, and what I would like to say is, is too, that we can fall into the realm of focusing so much on the feeling and not enjoying the journey. Because part of falling in love or just being in love with a person and again it can be platonic is the journey understanding why you feel this way and really enjoying it and so that pressure on yourself or others does not have to truly be take a step back and really think about it ask yourself first how do i feel right now when i'm with this person Right. And then just watch them. You don't have to keep asking just to, you know, make sure. Well, I just want to make sure I ain't scaring you off. I'm making sure that you feel the same way I do. I'm just making sure, you know, we good. Are we good? Are we good? Chill out. Just chill out. Just watch it. Sit back because and again, I always talk about that weight. Right. Ask yourself, why am I talking so much? 
Let me just chill out. This person might be loving me right in my face, but I'm so focused on them telling me that they love me or me being afraid of saying that I love them. I'm not even enjoying just being loved. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're talking about. How, who do you love and how do they know? And are you enjoying the process and actually being in it? Because it's one thing to fall in love, but are you enjoying even being in it before you express where you're at? You see? And sometimes we, we, like you just said, we miss all of the, the signs, the, the good things that happen because we're waiting on a word when they're showing us an action. See? You know? And so people are, when you say you love me, mm-hmm. well, girl, you got everything that you want. You know, See? your table is full of flowers every single week. <laughs> you know, he comes and makes sure everything is good, give you some money for your groceries, and he has to tell you no, that. Wait, you know? but, 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 but to that point. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if your friend is saying something like that, I would say I, if I were you or if I was that person listening, I would ask, well, do you love those flowers? Mm-hmm. See, that's the key, because if you're questioning if this person truly loves you and they're doing all these things and if those gifts aren't, you know, equal to or showing you enough to let them let that person know that they love you. Is that what it takes? So that's what that's what we're talking about. How do they know? Right. You get what I mean? Because you can have all the things in the world that a person is giving you and it may not mean nothing to you. And you still they don't know if yeah. they're loving you correctly. That's where the communication there, comes. Yes. In. So if you do not, um, if, if gifts is not your thing then you need to say that. How do I accept love? How do I feel love? You know, and this is what I need from you Mm -hmm. in order to feel love. Thank you for all of the stuff. But really for me, I need somebody who's going to be right next to me, Mm -hmm. who is going to hug me when, you know, I'm feeling down, who's going to uh, say encouraging words to me when I need to hear them or not, you know, just to say them. So if somebody is giving you all of these things. Again, we talked about a love languages before. They're probably operating out of their own love language. And if it's not good for you or you're not receiving it as love, you need to say something. You know, thank you for all this stuff, but I'd rather have your time. There you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd rather have, you know, we can just sit and talk or sit and watch a good movie together, or we can go out and volunteer together if acts of service is what it is, that he's there with you helping out someone else. So communication. Um, is is very vital. Yes, in- communication so. is, but and and then the communication to be willing to ask the person, yes. "Hey, what is it that you need for you to know that I'm here, that I'm not going anywhere, that I'm good, so we can right. get out of that that realm of all these extra questions every five mm-hmm. minutes." Like, don't get me wrong. So, so you can you can meet an individual. And the circumstances may not have been the best, but you've grown to love them. And sometimes there's uh, situations that pop up and then it reverts back mentally back to how things once were. And then so you're like, wait a minute. So now insecurities may seep in. But so the thing is, is to understand that other person's point of view and say, okay, well, look, that happened in the past. And you have shown me this thus far. So that is love. That is the growth process of love. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're talking about is Mm -hmm. who do you love and how do they know? And what I want to touch on next is what we don't really think about. I'm not going to say we because I'm not sure if you do or not, but just things to consider. Practicing the art of forgiveness. Okay. Okay. Practicing the art of forgiveness, and that kind of leads into what what I was just talking about, because when you truly, truly love a person and you want to know how, well, you want to know how do they know that you love them, just think about the forgiveness piece, okay? So we often have little spats, you know, with loved ones. Some are big, don't get me wrong, some are big, but as they say, pick your fights, Ladies and gentlemen, you have to pick your fights and try to and try to release your anger and frustration so that you can adopt more positive attitudes. So, again, we talked about this all the time. It's like, hey, what's more what's most important 
the situation or the relationship. I love this person. Let me chill out. I, do I have to let them know what they say and sound stupid? So what we're doing is because it might. I mean, it could be just the dumbest thing and, and makes absolutely no sense. One plus one will always be two, not 11. You dig? Or not 22 or not 21. So it's always going to be two. But there may be times when you just sit back, chill out. And just say, you know what, I forgive this person because what's most important is that I love them. And then they can receive that. They can say, you know what, this person loved me because they could have really showed my face. You get what I'm saying? They, they, they gave me grace in order to show how much they love me. What you think, Camille? That, that's true. You have to pick your battles. You know, everything is not a battle. And sometimes showing love is that I'm not going to fight with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to fight with you because, like you said, the relationship is more important. So we can agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. And then some people want to fight you about that. Well, I don't want you to agree to disagree. I want you to agree with me. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to let it be. It's done. My part is over. You know, I've said what I said. And OK, you know, I, res- I respect your opinion. Um, it's just not mine. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we just have to say, okay. And um, so you're absolutely right. There's just some things that we have to, is it really worth the fight? You know, is it going to, what, what is the end goal here? Mm -hmm. The end goal is that we're coming together. And if it's something that is not going to really um, alter or change the way that we live or anything like that, like, you know, just say arguing about something on TV, you know, a, a perspective on a, on a TV show that you got. Oh, I agree with him. And now we got this big old fight about a scenario that ain't even real life for us. You know what I mean? There you go. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because I was having a conversation with a person saying, OK, so if I'm arguing with an individual that I yeah. truly love, let's look at our situation. Hold on. We're both in the same situation. So so what are we going to look either we're going to do something together or we're going to sit here, shut up and change the channel, if that makes sense. Exactly. Let's pick something else. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I, and I want to just say, you know, hello to everyone out there. We have some folks from all over the world joining us. And I just want to acknowledge you and just say hello, you know, Africa, Japan. We have some Alaska, some some of everyone. So thank you guys for being on here. And as we talk about all of this love stuff, you know, um, it's one of those things that there are so many songs written about it, so many uh, books written about it, that it's it's just really important because love is an integral part of our lives. Yes. But um, yes. yeah. So anyway, um, you know, with all of that said, I, I just there's just certain things like. Ashley said, love conquers all, you know, that you have to make a a decision. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. And you have to choose that, you know, those outside influences and things like that are not going to to derail you from your real life. Absolutely. And that love looks this way for you all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I can't mirror my relationship from somebody else. I can't, you know... um, to be something that I'm not. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, what does that look like for us? Yes. And then I'm choosing the relationship on over being right. Exactly. You know, or the argument. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, so like she said, just welcome. And, and hopefully you guys are getting something from this. Let us know where you are and share. Are you guys still sharing? Are you sharing this? And are you following us to make sure that you are staying not just sane, but getting all this good goodness when it comes down to resilience. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook so that your post can be Post it and comments can be commented. All right. So after this short break, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to call in. All right. To call in. And I think that's what it is. This is good, healthy dialogue just so we can make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. We will be right back. If you're looking to buy or sell anywhere across the 50 states, contact Jamila Seals. Jamila is a realtor with Keller Williams Marquis who exudes credibility, commitment, and determination while serving the Metro East and Scott Air Force Base, Illinois areas. 
Her warm and friendly approach combined with unparalleled communication skills and enthusiasm for helping others allows her to connect and provide clients with the best possible service and experience. There are three things she does with and for her clients. First, negotiate deals for you. This means she'll treat your money like it's her money. Second, guide you through a simplified process which means she'll provide sound advice to ensure you make an informed decision in identifying or choosing the right house for you. And last but not least, creative marketing. She'll provide a cutting edge marketing plan that's tailor made for you. Bottom line, she's going to get the job done properly and not let you down. So if you're searching for your new dream home, give Jamila a call today at area code 618 202-8751. Again, that's 618-202-8751. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're talking about love. Who do you love and how do they know? And if you're just joining us, my name is Seth and I'm here with Miss Camille. And yes, and we're here to make sure everything stays good with you with this week's sanity check. And a good morning to everyone that's on. Read a comment here says forgiveness is something we have to eventually do if we are truly God's children. We have to answer to that. Uh, You don't have to forget, but if you really love that person, the works is worth it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and, and the thing is, it's just being able to admit or saying, hey, you know what? First of all, you have to forgive yourself before you're able to forgive another person. Because is that truly forgiving if you're holding on? Of course, it's not about forgetting, but realize what you're remembering you're remembering the situation and you're remembering how you felt so that you don't go back to it not to bring it back up anytime you know situations is is filed and say look i remember that one time back in the 80s you did this like fool here we are you know why would you do that so the key is yes forgiveness is key but again you do it out of love not out of proving a person wrong and keeping it in your back pocket forgiveness is forgiving and forgetting what you think yes it's like you say you don't necessarily uh forget but you can't keep bringing it back up either Mm -hmm. if you say you forgive you need to let it go um because then you can tell when you have unforgiveness still in your heart because that thing will continue to permeate those conversations or keep being brought up, you know, in the heat of the moment. And it's like, wait a minute, I thought we got past that. And then now you're bringing yourself all the way back, you know, to that moment. You're allowing those past failures or mistakes or whatever to hijack, um, you know, the, the stage that you're in now. You guys have built all this love over that time. Why would you allow that thing that has not happened ever again to come back and hijack that moment from you. See, So we have to be mindful of that. You know, have I really forgiven? And if it has come up, then maybe you need to go back and say, okay, time out. I didn't think that, um, I didn't realize that this was still an issue for me. Yeah, and have you grown, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I have to work on that. You know, it's not the other person's responsibility at that point. If they've apologized, if they were sincere, their actions show it, um, they have not done anything again, now it's your... you can't just expect somebody else to continue to keep trying to fix something that you have to fix. That's a you thing, mm-hmm. you know? So if you say you forgive, then you have to do the work that it takes and it is hard um, and uncover why it's so hard for you to forgive that thing because it's often underlying issues that really don't have anything to do with the person. Yes. You no, know, even though they may have done that, the reason why it's so intense for you is because there's a history of stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, that's happened or those feelings of rejection or those feelings of abandonment or those feelings of whatever they are, you have not dealt with. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe you thought you dealt with that particular thing, but it's tied to a whole long list of things um, that is going to hinder you from loving fully and being able to receive that love fully from a person. So we have to work on that. Absolutely. And before you go into your next point too, I want to let everybody know what I think will be good for next week. And you let me know, Camille, we can talk about the, our apology languages. 
meaning how do we accept apologies? I think that's a great subject and 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 and, and a great show. And ladies and gentlemen, what do you what do you think about that? Give us a, a hashtag or hearts if you think that that would be something great that we can talk about. And what we do is if you can dig it, if everybody can dig it. We we'll put the quiz down there so you can take the quiz. And so in the next show, we can actually talk about those uh, forgiveness and basically finding out how you forgive. How do you forgive and why is it hard for you to get over certain things? OK, but go ahead, Camille, back to what we're talking about. How do you love and how do they know? Yes. So I'm going to talk about cultural norms. All right. And family norms. Some cultures, um, affection is not really uh, looked highly on, you know. So the way that you express your love may be by finances, providing a stable home for your family, um, passing down, you know, businesses and things like that. Uh, for women, it may be cooking or making sure that the house is, is uh, clean and the kids are taken care of. So there are some cultural ba- um, uh, boundaries or uh Barriers is the word I'm looking for. Cultural barriers to how we love. Sometimes what happens, too, is when people come over from other cultures and they come in the United States and they see a lot of people are being openly affectionate. You know, maybe their heart is that way, but there's conflict with the family. They're like, hold on, wait a minute. And now I have to reevaluate. And then they may, uh, you know, or may even come into a union with a person who loves differently. And they have to go back and go, okay. I never saw my mom and dad hug or kiss. Mm -hmm. And I have friends who have been like that. They was like, I've never seen my parents really be in a loving relationship. They've been married for I don't know how many years, but I've never seen my father just embrace my mother or my mother just go up and hug my dad from the back or give him a kiss or something. We never saw that growing up. And, you know, when they try to um, really express that love to their parents again that feeling of rejection because the parents can get it so you kind of harden yourself you know what i mean and you go okay well we didn't show love in my family we didn't hug and kiss that's just weird to me you know what i mean and then you start projecting that on other people so there are some cultural norms that we have to you know kind of um acknowledge uh when we're dealing with love and why it's so hard for us to express it You know, and then if you want to, and here's the other thing, I think that a lot of people, I know that a lot of people, I'll say the people that I know, that I know this about, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, they want to be expressive, but because they didn't have an example, they don't know how to. And so it feels very awkward for them. And they don't know, you know, how to, okay, so how do I go about and just hug somebody? You know, mm-hmm. is it okay? And then there's this awkward exchange or whatever. And I always say, first of all, you know, if you're just getting to know a person, ask them, is it okay for me to hug you? You know, because everybody's not a hugger. And I see body language when people are like, Ooh, I'm like, Ugh. you, you oh. know, it, it, it's funny you said that because I've met people that say, hey, I'm a hugger. So come here and hug me. Hold on. Chill out. Right. So. I don't care if you, <laughs> you don't tell me you a hugger. I need to hug you. You see what I'm saying? You need to watch out for that because not everybody can dig what you dig. Exactly. But what I've learned is I am a hugger. Mm-hmm. And so I go, I'm a hugger, mm-hmm. but is it okay for me to hug you? There you go. You know, mm-hmm. And then, or I, I watch their body language because you can see when they're coming in the people and they start doing this and I go, oh, okay. And I'll extend a hand mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. I'll just throw up my hand and say, okay, hi. You know, and then you can see them just kind of like, Yes. Oh my gosh, I didn't have to go through mm-hmm. that. But because we all don't love the same, we don't express our emotions and our affections the same, it's very, very important for us, one, to um, kind of think about that. See, read body language, you know, before you just kind of go in because you can really just do some damage to people if you hug them like that and they have some trauma or they just don't know how to. And it could be, I'm never going near that person again. Because she just violated my space, didn't ask me if, you know, that wasn't okay with me. And you're like, man, I was just giving her a hug because, you know, so you have to make sure that you you ask those things first and that Mm -hmm. you just don't go in and that you don't force your uh, love language, your affection, your level of, you know, love, wherever you're at, uh, comfortability with um, affection on someone else. But if you're one of those people who are struggling because you want to do it, you just don't know how. I just say, just do it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And that's in other things, you know, just you have those feelings and you're like, oh, you want to go, go, go. And the other person is receptive. Just try it. 
throw your hands around them for a hot second and then let go, you know, like who get past that hump. But you have to uh, love is something and affection is something that you have to practice because it's a choice. It's a choice. And when you feel it here, but you don't act on it, you're choosing not to. And And that repression of emotion is very, it can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So if you want to just practice, practice with your kids, even though you may not have had it as an adult, I mean, as a kid growing up all the way, you know, you have your children and children, they, they learn from us, you know, some of them, they do their own thing, but you know, just wrap your hands around your kids. And I agree. I agree. And, and I do, I would like to say too, if you are, if you are struggling, And if that's something that you are dealing with, you can either try. And if you're not ready to try, just express that. Because we got to keep in mind, early in relationships, individuals let you know who they are. We just don't listen. You understand? We don't listen. We expect them, well, well, I've been with them this long. Now they need to start coming over to my side. That is not necessarily true, right? We cannot put what we expect or like you said love languages and put that burden on individuals when that's just not it so we need to be willing to meet individuals where they are and watch this is it might be a shock but be okay with it just be okay now this is the deal you have to and it goes both ways you have to ask yourself what are you okay with and then talk to them and see what they're okay with and then you can coexist Right. Because there is a a balance. There needs to be a balance in any relationship. Hey, I'm not overtly a hugger. I'm not a like a Philly touchy person, but my significant other is. So there has to be a balance. Right. Try. But you have to communicate to see where that balance is. Right. But you have to be willing to give to to have that communication. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're ultimately talking about is having that communication and not assuming that an individual loves you, love you back just because of the things that you do and the way that you feel. Be willing to have that conversation. Say, hey, I love you no matter what you say. I'm going to love you, but this is what I need to know from you Mm -hmm. as a barometer. You get what I'm saying? I just need to know what you think. I think that's true. And and as you're talking, uh, what came to me really is a lot of people have trust issues. So I'm having to trust someone with my feelings, with my emotions, my everything. And so you have to build trust with that person. Um, You know, you just can't. There's some people like a hug means nothing. It's just an outward affection of, you know, or expression of, you know, whatever a feeling, hey, we're friends or whatever. But for uh, other people, because their trust has been so broken, you know, you have to really establish, you know, or build rapport with them first. And you have to establish a certain level of trust. And as you notice, even in romantic relationships, it doesn't just, even if you have two lovey-dovey people, um, there's still this level that is reserved for when you're, you know, you're, you're in a very trusting relationship. And then, like, even it's different with a boyfriend and girlfriend. When you get married, there's this this vulnerability there. But then there's this thing that says, okay, I trust this person. We made a vow. You know, I know that they're not going to hurt me, protect me. You would hope anyway. You know, and so there are levels that you allow your spouse to go to that you wouldn't allow anyone else to go to. And that's because there's that level of trust that you're going to take care of me. You're going to protect me. You're going to love me. You're going to, you know, all of those things um, that I'm sharing with you, that you're going to keep those with us. And so we allow people in at different levels. um, And a lot of it is based on trust. You're right. And, And yes, a lot of that is based on trust and being able to really talk about, hey, this is where I am right now. And based off of what I've experienced, it's hard for me to get to where you are. I'm willing to get there, but I need time. So if a person is letting you know what they need, don't expect them to just fall into where you think they should be. So we need to really watch out for that and be willing to listen to individuals we have to listen and as a matter of fact that brings us to the next point but before i do again guys if you are in ladies if you are on facebook make sure you go to streamyard.com forward slash facebook and also if you have a comment you can call the lines is open you can call and so we can have a good dialogue and talk about this and then give us let us know how your significant other knew 
that you love them. And so the next uh, point that we want to talk about is really offering the gift of listening. And that brings us to what we were talking about here earlier, giving others the gift of listening. If we're truly, truly listening to individuals. So focus on others and hear what they're saying. Okay. What they are saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just sound, it's actually words. And if they take the time to talk to you, then they really want you to pick up what they're putting down if you can dig it. So remember the 80-20 rule. Listen more, talk less, right? We got two ears and one mouth for a reason, right on? So this allows others to share and also gives you a chance to understand their feelings, the reasons why they're not so let's say uh, a physical or touchy or, or whatever the case it is, they may be giving you all the signs and all the information right there, but we don't want to hear it because we're so, because we're used to something. And that's just, you know, you ever heard individuals say, well, that's just how I am. They got to deal with it. Yes. Now, um, <laughs> see, I, so maybe that person say, okay, I hear you, but this is where I am. Now, the question is, do I just have to deal with that or is this relationship serious? You see what I'm saying? What, what do you think about that, Camille? There's a level of compromise. You know, two people that are having issues, you can't just be like, this is how I am all the time. You know, there has to be some sort of compromise from each each person. Okay, I get this how you are. Just like I want you to understand me, I have to understand you. So there might there has to be some flex on both sides that says, you know, I love you enough. I care about you enough. I respect you enough that I'm going to <clears throat> come out of my comfort zone and I am going to do this thing that I know you like, or I'm going to stop doing this thing that I know you don't like, even though I may not, I might like doing it. You know, maybe I have to do it with my friends. I can't do it with you. You know what I mean? And so there has to be some give and take if you're going to make any relationship work. If you love that person enough, you respect them enough, you respect their boundaries too, or you find ways that you you guys kind of find a common ground or a meeting place that, okay, you can do so much, but after that, you have to say stop. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, scenario real quick. I was having a, an issue and it was surrounding bad breakups and stuff like that. And I had uh, some, a few years ago, a really, really hard time accepting love and accepting affection. And especially from my children, which was really weird because those are my kids and I love my kids, you know, and my oldest daughter would try to hug me and I would just, I would cringe, I would cringe, I would cringe. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I, I now know where that came from. But like, and she was like, mom, I need affection too. And I'm like, you're right. You know, no matter what I'm going through and how hurt I was at the time and how I just was to myself off of everyone, including my children, um, she had needs as well because that's a relationship right? That's my child. And I love her. And I needed her to know that. And just saying I love you wasn't enough. She needed to feel it from me. And so I I told her I had to kind of sit down and evaluate. And I said, baby, this is how I'm feeling right now. And it's really, really hard for me. But I will give you a hug. We're going to have to count to three. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I would hug her for those three seconds that it would take so much energy from me to just hug her and put my arms around her for those three three seconds. But it was enough for her because she saw me trying. Look, I'm gonna get emotional about it now. Mm-hmm. But uh, she saw me trying. Mm-hmm. And so she um, she gave me grace too, because mm-hmm. she knew I was going through some things that mm-hmm. I had to work out. Um, but that was a relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I had to give because I didn't want my kids to feel like they were not uh, loved or appreciated or respected. And so eventually, you know, when I came out of that, and I think that my kids helped me with that, you know, really embracing me anyway, and like, mom, we're going to love you through this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to, and now, you know, I'm, I'm glad when they come and, you know, plop up on my daughter's 23, and she's bigger than me, you know, but I love when she comes and hugs me, and I just hug her, and we'll just talk, and all this kind of stuff, but, you know, people go through things. You get you over there getting misty eyed, Camille. <laughs> I did get misty you, you're talking about your babies. <laughs> See, you know, I feel you. No, I, I feel you. And you know, you're right. Yeah. Everybody, people go through things, but we have to realize that the individuals that's in our universe, yes. the individuals that's in our universe, they are there 
for a reason. And my daughter, too, she's the same way. Wait, wait, what? what is it? I think she is a cancer. I'm not sure. I'm Look, OK, so her birthday <laughs> is July 21st. I don't That's know. Her birthday. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, hey, hey, well, there you go. So, okay, so there it is. But listen, she loves this huggy, huggy stuff. And I can dig it. Don't get me wrong. She's only, you know, nine or whatever. But I had to talk to her. She said, Daddy, you don't like the hug. I said, No, baby. I, I do, but then I don't. So here, watch this. Give it to me real quick. All right, go about your business. You see? But I have to realize that this still my daughter and I have a responsibility, see? Because I don't want to reject her as a father. Because if I reject her being the first man that she loves, then she's going to look for what she needs from some fool. See, and then I'm going to be sitting back wishing that I gave her a little bit more when I have the time, you see, and make time to do that. So I've been growing in that. It's hard because I just don't like it. But after having a child, it's not about you anymore. So it's about them, but it takes, it's not easy. It's not a switch. It's not binary. Okay. It's on and then it's, it's off. No, it takes time. So ladies and gentlemen, you got to ease into that. You got to ease into it. Yes. And that's, uh, oh, nice. But all these cancer twins over here. Thank you. Yep. Cancer. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you're, you're right. And it's not when you're in relationships, you know, it's how, do, how do those people know that you love them? Even when I'm feeling my worst. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a responsibility to the people who are in relationship with me Yes, that I still have to try to give something to them. Because like we talked about, the reason why people don't express love is because of feelings of rejection. And if your parents are rejecting you, then every time you go to try to give love, you know, and somebody does something or says, you know, oh, well, thank you. You have that, you experience that feeling of rejection again, and it keeps you from being able to love fully and wholly. And so, you know, they'll continue to feel those, those emotions and it'll, it'll stop them from possibly happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how to accept this love from this person because I'm used to being rejected, you know, and this is, this is what it, it looks like for me. So it's like, Oh, nope, I'm afraid. And it's going to pull me back. If I let my walls down mm -hmm. and that person hurts me, like I was hurt by my parents or hurt by whatever, then, you know, where does that leave me? People don't want to take that risk. Mm -hmm. And so they shun love. But people in your circles, people need to know how you express it is you know, up to you, but it needs to be in a way that they know, which is what this is about, in a way that they know and that you're okay with doing, even if you have to put yourself out there for a minute, you know what I mean? Sacrifice a little bit because it's about the relationship. Yes. About you're the right. person, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it is, there's some benefits for you too, which we'll talk about. Right. But you really have to understand that, you know, you are not just you alone. No, absolutely. No, no, you're not. You're not just you and you're you, you are a walking representation of your experiences, but you're also a gift. You are also a gift. So stop being selfish. Right. Yeah. Understand who you are. Understand who you are and understand what individuals need. So before we go into your, your last one, Camille, ladies and gentlemen, the lines are open. Call us 618-792-6747. Let us know how you know other individuals love you or that they know that you love them. I know it's kind of flippy, right? But you have to understand, is it, how do your individual, how do your significant other know or your friend know that you love them. All right. So give us a call. So go ahead, Camille. What do we got for your, your last point? So if you're having, um, um, there's a couple of things. If you're having a, an issue expressing love, there's a few things that you can do. One of that is to name that fear. You know what I mean? You have to figure out what it is that you're really, really afraid of. Is it the rejection? Is it the shame? Is it that I look stupid? <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people are like, oh, I might look horny or, you know, somebody may perceive me as being thirsty. And why do I have these fears? You know, maybe it's the feeling that you're not good enough, you know, and you have to go back and say, I am good enough. You know, I'm capable of love. I'm here. I was born with love, you know, and so you have to replace those those kind of self-limiting beliefs, those things with the truth about you are worthy to be loved and to give love, you know, and then you have to accept that everything in life is a risk. You may love somebody that may not love you. 
you know what I mean, may not love you back. And that's okay because you're expressing your feelings towards them. And hopefully there's no expectation. This is how I feel. I could take responsibility for how I feel. You know, I would hope that you would love me the same. Relationships are different. You know what I mean? That there there comes a point where something should be reciprocal. But, you know. Hello? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, we got a call. Go, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, this is Mama Jackie. How you doing? How y'all this morning? Good, good. I, I'm I'm sending you guys some 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 real love and some hugs and some kisses to the phone, but this is my my um my comment. I was looking up how what love means to women and what love means to men, and one of the things it was saying was that for men it's more respect and submission, those kinds of things are the um, language of of how men feel loved, and I realized that. I have a, I think that's more important to me as well. You know, people say, I can love you, I love you, I love you. But it's their behavior, their actions that I watch more than anything else. And I think at the top of the behavior list is the respect piece. So I just kind of, you know, want to give a, a, a shout out to all of those who, you know, um, sometimes, you know, Mama used to say words are dime a dozen, yeah. you, you know, and, and they don't mean as much do you actually show that love? Yes. And so that's my comment for the day. And, and I just want you to know I'm, I'm really enjoying this. And yes, I am open to next week's um, topic as well. Right on. Bless well, you, you. And y'all have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? And, and just give me two seconds and say that makes a lot of sense. And because I, I know that about me personally. And so mm-hmm. individuals, and ladies and gentlemen out there in family, you have to know yourself because I know that, hey, you can tell me all day how you feel by how you treat me. See? <laughs> is the key. So think about how you're treating other individuals. And we talked about this before, but how do they feel in your presence? So if I feel like you don't respect me as a man, right? But you still telling me you love me. Really? Now it's just words because I don't feel that you love me because I'm a man, right? Why would I need you to let me know the things that you, you know, if that makes sense to either um not necessarily manipulate what is it De- demasculate you know what i'm saying me or embarrass or whatever the case it is now i don't feel respected but you still say out the other side of your mouth you love me you know what i mean so we have to make sure that we are honest about the type of love that we need for our significant others so go ahead camille and, and communicate that, you know, if there is a rift because people are getting to know each other and so, you know, situations happen differently, you know, like this is how I felt, you know, that other patient person may not have intended to disrespect you, but because of your past history, this is what disrespect looks for like for you. And, you know, what transpired in that, in that situation that made us, you know, come to this. So the communication part is very, very important uh, when it comes to that to let me know, hey, and then hopefully that person won't make that misstep again. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and, and it's, it's funny because the, 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 the deal is if you f- express, hey, this is what I don't like. I really, I would really, now you probably didn't know this. And if this is the first infraction, if you will, this is what I don't like. And do you understand this is what I don't like? Who responsibility is it at that point, right? And I'll open it up to anyone that's listening right now, and you guys can comment. Who responsibility is it to remind this person, hey, you're still doing what I don't like? And to the point where a person now, their level of forgiveness, if you will, or grace starts to go down because, hey, I just told you this last week. Now, what do you need me to do for you to get it? Now it's happening again. Is it my responsibility or is this person's, is it this person's responsibility to keep a mental note? Say, all right, you know what? Ah, wait, I stepped in something. Let me let them know that I remember what I promised them or I remember what they said. And I don't want to do that anymore. So what do you think, Camille? 
I think that's where the apologies is real uh, important, you know, mm. understanding that too, because we have to give each other grace. When we're learning people and stuff like that, because they say it one time doesn't mean that you're going to remember it in a heated moment or that, you know, at that thing that's the, at the forefront of your mind. However, when it happens and you're like, Ooh, you know, you have to be humble enough to say, look, I, this is an area I have to work on, you know, my mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? My mouth is sharp. So, you know, I may say something or I may feel disrespected as well. And so, you know, my first reaction is to do X, Y, and Z. But I remember what you said. And I didn't intend for it to be like that. I just reacted. And that's why that pause that we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, it's so important that when something happens, I have to take the pause. You know, that, that time in my brain before I react, you know, when something happens and before I react to say, okay, is this going to give me my intended result? And where is this coming from? Why do I feel this way about this person? Why am I acting so harshly about them? And do I really want to go there? We have that time and that pause uh, to do that. But then it's that person who has been given the information that um, this is disrespectful to that person. It's their responsibility to go back and make that right. Now, if you don't want to change that and that's something that you, you know, this is just how I am, you need to express that so that person can make a choice whether they want to be with you. Right. And, and don't, you know, don't, 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 listen, don't, don't tell me that you're sorry, you're going to work on it and you ain't working. You don't, right. you don't even have intentions on working on it. You, what you're doing is you're just pacifying me just to shut me up. You feel me? Oh, no, no, no. You're right. No, I heard you. No, you, I ain't going to ever do that again. Whatever. As soon as you talk, turn, as soon as you turn around, you know, you, you remember on Friday, look, you, hey, look. I'm all right. I'm all right. As soon as they go. And then, you know what I'm saying? Somebody turn around and you look, I'm going to keep on talking. But right. you have to, like you said, understand what you're trying to do and what do you want to accomplish if you truly are listening to that person and not yeah. taking what this individual is saying as whining or complaining. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, look, a squeaky wheel is squeaky for a reason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's squeaky for a reason. It's not just by happenstance. Something is irking this person. So we have to be, like you said, humble enough to say, uh, if I misstep, that's my fault. Because I do remember we're yeah. grown. I'm cognizant to know enough to know that. This happened just a couple of days ago or last month. I know, and we, I know we're getting older, but our memory ain't that bad. So my bad. I, I, I jacked up on that. That's my fault because you did say A, B, C, and D. Absolutely. And, and like you said, it, it, like I said before, it takes a while to break certain habits. If mm -hmm. that's how you are. But the key is, am I actively trying? You know, and do I, when I do make that misstep, do I go back and say, you know what? I love you. I'm sorry. I should not have done, you know, it wasn't my intent. I just reacted. I'm going to try to slow the next time. And, you know, it's going to take a few missteps. Some people get it right away, but sometimes it takes a few missteps. Um, but you're trying, you know, and you're seriously, earnestly trying, sincerely trying. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it does take some time for certain people, depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's in their behavior that they, you know, have uh, done so long that you're asking them to, to kind of give in, it's not going to be an overnight thing. You know, they can make a choice. Don't get me wrong, but they have to be very, very cognizant and very intentional about that thing that, you know, you're asking them not to do. Yes. So now what's the health benefits so there are several health benefits of um expressing love and one of those things we talked about is that um repression you know uh when you don't express your your emotions love and everything like that it increases your depression your anxiety um you get sick easier and all this kind of stuff because those emotions are there they have to come out Okay, we're meant to be emotional. We are emotional beings and things like that. That's, that doesn't mean that we're just like over emotional, but we have emotions, you know, the range of them. So we have to express them in some way. But the health benefits of expressing love are, um, studies have shown that is you have fewer doctor's visits. Um, they already, we already said that, uh, or a, a lot of people probably know about the studies that say that married people, married men tend to live longer um, than single men, right? Um, and it's, so many different things because there's less instances of depression in people who um, are able to express love or in an, or or are in loving relationships. Um, 
they have that that connection to that person. They also show a reduce in substance abuse, even if a person, say, was drinking or doing whatever uh, prior to that relationship. They found that when they are in loving, healthy relationships, it doesn't have to be a, you know, specific, like a marriage or whatever, but um, even in marriage, people are less likely to abuse substances and they're less likely to experience depression. So those are some of the other things. Uh, lower blood pressure. Um, a happy marriage is good for your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's several studies that said that, that married people have um, some of the best blood pressure there is. Uh, followed by single people, you know what I mean? But uh, blood pressure is lowered when you're in a healthy relationship where you can express your 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 love and your emotions. And then it also shows that, you know, it's a natural pain uh, reducer. You have less headaches and less back pain. Chronic pain, uh, a lot of it is due to um, stress, you know what I mean? But when you're able to express those emotions and get them out, you're not keeping them in and repressing them and suppressing them. Um, you have less pain, period, headaches and pain. It's something about, uh, Seth, I don't know if you ever uh, have gone through this, but say you had an issue with a person, right? And you it just doesn't sit right with you. And you just suppress it and you're like, oh, and it's just eating at you. You're stressed out. You know, this person might be going about their business, but you're all stressed out and stuff. But then the moment that you say, you know what? I can't take, I need to tell them how I feel. Good, bad, or ugly, regardless of what it is. You know, some people, I might love them so much. I just want to tell them. And you tell them, you're like, oh. You know, and no, and so I, I I think it's all situational, okay? I think it's situational because, you know, you can love anyone and they do something wrong and you have this inkling or this notion to get it off your chest. But then there's times when you can't really with that person because they have to be willing to see the wrongdoing. And if they're not willing to see it, or pre- 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 prepared to see it, then it's going to cause another riff. So what I do is I utilize my sounding boards. I utilize my mentors, significant others. I, you know, utilize true friends first to make sure I'm not tripping. You see what I'm saying? I need to make sure I'm not overreacting before I go into a situation and go to a loved one and said, hey, this is what you did. This is how I felt, blah, blah, blah. Because the deal is, is that my feelings are valid. Okay. Mm-hmm. My feelings are valid, but I really have to look at the whole totality of the thing before I feel, you know, the need to connect with that individual to let them know. But then before I even do that, I have to be ready and to understand that this person, no matter what I say, they still not going to get it. So then I have to think about is it even worth bringing up? And the fact that I utilize my sounding board, okay, mm-hmm. and or my board of directors, if you will, and they let me know that things are cool, but some mm-hmm. people are just some people, then mm-hmm. I can step away from that and not expect mm-hmm. certain things from that loved one because they may not be in the space to receive what I have to give them. You see? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the thing that you can only control your emotions. Here's the thing, right? So you can't control how somebody else is going to react. Oftentimes, again, we place that expectation on the person instead of this is what I need to do for me. Yep. You know, I need to get this off my chest. I don't care how you react. At least, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And we're not sitting here acting like everything is hunky dory right. and that I'm okay with it. I need for you to know how I feel regardless. And now it's your choice. And I say that a lot of time. I just want you to know how I feel. What you do with that is your your business. Right. But for me, it's a release because now I'm not having this. I should have said this and this is going wrong because of whatever. It is a release for me that now the responsibility, I did my part. Mm-hmm. Now it's on you to do whatever you have to do. And so that's the, that's the exchange. It's not always just about, you know, is it the right thing? And sometimes you just have to express, it's the expression, whether